So Pashtana, uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. I, I, I know that you're in Afghanistan and I obviously don't want to ask you more than that, but are you safe right now? Um, how, do you, how do you feel through all this? I am on the move, so I, I don't consider it safe, but I keep on moving just for my safety. The minute Kandar fell, I had to like move because that's the only option I had. And um, so I keep on moving from that day. And my initial response, yes, a few days I have been emotional. Um, I, I cried. I was, uh, I was very worried. But right now we have to understand that it's a crisis mode and we have to make sure that we answer the crisis rather than like, you know, focusing only on the emotional sides of the things. Can you tell us a little bit what the last few days have been like since the Taliban have taken over the country? Life is relatively calm. Life is calm, but the Taliban are pressuring the people, right? Like they have been to people's houses, taken their generators, uh, uh, whatever appliances that they can find, whatever is valuable, they take away. And then they are lying about it on the international media that they are taking, we uh, taking weapons. They are not. They are taking everything and anything that they can find. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is at the same time, the schools are being closed down. The private schools in Kandahar are closed down right now. And it's a shame that uh, nobody's talking about it. The girls in Herat were sent back home and they haven't resumed and it's been a week and nobody's talking about it. So it's all like, you know, everybody's talking about the fact that, like, you know, what will the Taliban do? What will their future hold? But what about the normal civilians caught up in the middle of the crossfire, you know? Uh, I mean, if there's no government other than one that is rapacious and incompetent, they, see, the public offices are paralyzed right now. The um, Directorate for Education is paralyzed. Directorate for Healthcare is paralyzed. All these uh, heads, uh, the directors are all changed from like, you know, technocrats, people who worked in plan and policy are being changed. And now people who are like, literally fighters, who are militia men, who have fought all their lives, military men are being uh, set as like, you know, the people who could lead the directorate. I mean, like, can you expect someone who fought 20 years to be leading our education directorate? I don't think that's like, you know, a practical thing to do, but they are doing it right now. And that's like, you know, each directorate is for the whole province and every province has like uh, 17, 16 districts and all those districts has hundreds of villages, right? So you have to understand the crisis mode right now and the way they are handling it are two different things. And at the same time, they are not responsible responding well if they had a plan if they wanted to run the country they could have made sure that they have a plan in place they have a mechanism in place and they don't they don't have a plan or policy to move further with it military men can never do public policy we all know this we've heard a lot of things um i, I wouldn't necessarily say promises but a lot of claims from taliban representatives for example, that women will still be allowed to go to school through university. Um, first of all, do you think that's credible at all? And secondly, why are the schools closing right now if there isn't any such order? See, if the schools are closing right now because of their fear, the fear that they might be attacked, that's a relative real fear, right? At the same time, what they promise and what they are doing, two different things. I'll, I'll trust them when they say, okay, we have opened up schools, girls can go to schools. We don't have any issues with that. We'll provide security for them. We won't burn down. We won't harass them. Then I'm going to, uh, like, you know, accept that as a matter of fact, and I'm going to say, okay, they have changed. Right now, them saying one thing in Kabul, practicing that in Kabul, uh, there are liberties. People are going out and doing protests. But then can you imagine the same thing in Kandar? You will be literally torn into pieces. That's a different scenario right now. People are so scared. I know myself. Children are not going to school. They're abandoning their lessons because they are scared of the Taliban, because they are scared of the people on uh, patrolling on the streets, the Taliban. So you have to understand two different narratives. International media is focused on Kabul. People are in Kabul, so they love talking about Kabul, right? And they're letting things go and slip by. The minute the world has another hot topic, he, they will impose their law, they will impose their policing, they will police people and they will control them from what they wear to what they eat to what they dress to what they listen to to how they conduct their life. So, so who are these, uh, Af I mean, these are Afghan citizens, of course, your fellow Afghan citizens. Uh, who are the Taliban to you now? 
they are misogynistic patriarchal bred people and like you know used as instruments by regional powers to wage their wars in afghanistan and most importantly their regional powers are so afraid of the afghan women they use the afghan men to silence the afghan women so it's not just um, that they are like you know fighters and all that they were also used by the regional powers to be used as like you know to conduct their warfare in afghanistan for the united states this is the longest war that we've ever been involved in um and we're saying the war is over does the war feel over for you in afghanistan the war physically is over but uh, for rights it's still waging for people it's still waging for uh, for children it's still waging for people who want to access education it's still waging uh, p- war yes bloodshed is one thing but being suffocated is another thing peace means when you are able to live in peace but at the same time progress in peace the progress part is not uh, coming in handy right now so we have to understand that this side of the war bloodshed is done but the side where we talk about progress that's not happening right now when did it become clear to you that the americans were really out and and how do you respond to that how did it how did it make you feel them going out was never the issue even if they wanted to go out 3 years ago or now or 5 years ago when obama said that we want to leave right leaving is not the issue they're not superheroes the way they try to portray themselves in every alien movie that you know they are the saviors of the world and somehow everything is going to change everything is going to be okay if the americans are uh, like you know there that's not reality we all know that right so right now in afghanistan their presence was not the issue them legitimizing the taliban them let uh, turning a blind eye on the afghan civilians bloodshed that those were the things that made me question all their leadership throughout the world right that's the point that you all should be questioning not the fact that they have mere boots on the ground boots on the ground they didn't even fight the war so so what difference does it make in the one year uh, afghanistan was still sustainable right then how come in just a few days the minute they pull out uh, afghanistan starts falling down like a dominoes right the reason is that they legitimize they legitimize people leg- legitimize terror group and now they expect us to fight back with what with what so you legitimize decision, them so the decision to negotiate with the taliban the decision to bring them into the governing process was a fundamental mistake from your perspective fundamental mistake in a sense they were they could have asked the taliban to accept women rights they could have asked them to accept children rights they could have asked them to accept educational rights working women rights but they didn't do that they had all sorts of leverage and they didn't do all those things right so for me that's a question that's a very important question if you're not going to use your leverage where it's needed in human rights then what good are you Now you you saw that my president during his speech a couple of days ago put the blame on the Afghan forces said that if they're not prepared to fight for themselves that the Americans can't fight for them Afghanistan political leaders gave up and fled the country The Afghan military collapsed sometime without trying to fight I I am hearing a very different message from you and I'd like to give you the chance to to raise that It's a shame that he is insulting uh, he's dishonoring the Afghan forces the way he is saying that they didn't want to fight back if we didn't want to fight back i wouldn't have 2300 people in the army dead from my tribe only and i'm a very small tribe i come from maruf a district that is all mountainous and we as a district lost 2300 men to this war in the past two decades 2300 men is a huge number for one district right so if they didn't want to fight they didn't want to fight for themselves why why die right how many members of your tribe total just so everyone here understands what we're talking about it's a very small district so it's relatively around 20000 people or somehow like that and it's all family included now right now if you go to those idp villages if you uh, knock on every door it's a widow and orphans no man in the house there are no men left to bury the men that are uh, being murdered in the war in the past 3 weeks right so let me assure you that afghans wanted to fight for themselves it was the uh, orders that told them that the ceasefire has been uh, there and there is an negotiation in place a peace deal has been reached don't fight stand back 
let's not dishonor the afghan uh, army right now i mean like politics aside yes our uh, leaders were corrupt but people army no they were not corrupt they were willing to fight don't put uh, political leaders blame on uh, an army that was holy and that was sacred so what happened when when the uh, taliban started taking all of this territory and virtually no shots were fired why why was it that the afghan defense forces at that point basically just bled away because they were asked to stand by you know how military works you know how disciplined they are if you tell them to stand back even if somebody is murdering you they will stand back i have friends in the army they will always stand back they are very uh, to the they are disciplined people they are not civilians they are military i remember just 2 months ago when former president uh, ashraf ghani said that under no circumstances would he leave the country would he leave the people and you know just as the american ambassador was fleeing the country the afghan president was fleeing the country as well um how how do you feel about that see afghan president him leaving him fleeing that was disappointing that was also emotional because we all voted for him we wanted him to stand by us he we wanted him to do right by us right but he didn't he did right by his a group of corrupt leaders so all those things are very emotional to take in but then at the same time you have to understand that um, by the time that he thala ashraf ghani had to leave it was, there was nothing that he could do about it anyways right everything was taken he of course he didn't handle the crisis very well he didn't do right by the people of afghanistan but at the end of the day he was an elected president and he shouldn't be removed like that and democracy shouldn't be played with like that with right you can't just bring in people like you know Uh, let's bring in Taliban whenever we want. Let's bring in Karzai whenever we want. That's not how it's supposed to be. You you've been a very strong and vocal advocate for girls' education, and and spoken beautifully just about the the happiness, the joy of getting up in the morning and going to school. Something that had been taken away from from you for so long. What has it meant for your generation to have access to a proper education? see educational opportunities for people like us is like you know uh, opportunities to build our country opportunities to educate more people into being feeling responsible for this afghanistan for this country we cannot be aid dependent all our life we cannot be foreign aid dependent foreign influence dependent we have to do something on our own and for that it's very important to start by educating ourselves to start by becoming a scientist a doctor a teacher to have that human capacity to serve the country for the greater good but right now it's in jeopardy right 20 years you do everything right by your country and then one day somebody else decides that okay we want to pull out we want to decide for their future that's wrong right i didn't do anything to the united states right it was the taliban who bombed them right so then why don't you ask them to pay for the consequences why do i have to pay with my rights for those consequences i didn't do anything i'm a humanist why should i pay for their uh, mistakes What would you like to see? I mean, what gives you hope going forward? The fact that I am willing to put up a fight, the fact that other girls want to learn, the fact that all women are coming out right now, the fact that the Taliban one way or the other we have to listen to us. Uh, and the fact that the world is standing in solidarity with us no matter what. The lead, whatever the leaders do, the civilians do feel for Afghanistan and just for uh, just by the all these messages that I get from all these people throughout the world, it has been a, an amazing thing, right? You do understand that they, you are not alone. But at the same time, of Afghanistan is right now a hot topic and you have to make sure that within this time they accept it and then they make sure that we won't go back on this right of educational rights or women working right and those are important things and for me right now that is the hope that's what I'm uh, standing by by the time so that they can accept it that's my hope every day when i wake up making sure that they pu- push for a statement so that they make everyone in 33 provinces other than kabul go to schools go to universities continue with their life just because a few men in kabul in our presidential palace change doesn't justify the fact that we have to change our way of life for them pashtan adarani i'm i'm very sorry for what's happening in your country right now and uh, i really appreciate you spending a little bit of time with us thank you thank you so much for having me thank you